Ains. One dead, six injured in Jigao building collapse. Chinese man stabs 23-year-old Nigerian lover to death in Kano. One person injured in Niger tanker explosion. And on the foreign scene, thousands queue to see Queen Elizabeth coffin despite warning of 16-hour wait time. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Youssef. We begin in Jigao State, where at least one person has been confirmed dead following an early morning building collapse in Biriniwa local government area of the state. The police public relations officer of Jigao State Command, Lawan Shisu Adam, who confirmed the incident, said it occurred early Saturday morning at Bursali village in Biriniwa local government area. The PPRO said six other persons that were thought to have died were only unconscious and are now receiving treatment along with one other person. In a related development, 10 persons have been rescued after a canoe capsized in Cuffing House, a local government area of the state. Cases of boat mishaps have been occurring, a reoccurring decimal in the state in the last weeks, as many as five cases have left 19 people dead. The federal government, through the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, NISA, has appealed to authorities in various states to brace for more floods. Director General of the agency, Clement Nze, who gave the alert on, in a statement on Friday in Abuja, asked the state to take necessary measures to prevent the ugly flooding menace of the past years. According to him, Nigeria is now in the peak of the flooding season, and there is a need for the government, especially at local government levels, to intensify and set up efforts to avert related disasters in their domains. The NISA chief asked authorities in the 13 states that fall in the main course of rivers, Niger and Benue, to put in place adequate measures and enhance preparedness to mitigate any eventual flooding and accompanying disasters. The affected states include Kebi, Niger, Adamawa, Taraba, Benue, Nasarawa, Kogi, Edo, Delta, Anambra, Cross River, Rivers and Bielsa states. A yet to be identified Chinese man has allegedly stabbed his 23 year old lover to death at Jambulo Quarters, Kumbu's local government area of Kano State. The incident reportedly happened around 10 pm on Friday after the suspect came to visit the deceased, identified as Umukul Sumsan Buhari, at her parents' house located adjacent National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency in the area. While the reasons for what transpired between the duo that led to the unfortunate event remain sketchy, she was confirmed dead by a doctor after she was rushed to the hospital that same night. Abu Bakr Mustafa, a neighbor to the deceased, said the deceased, a divorcee, entered into a relationship with a Chinese national after her failed marriage. The police public relations officer in Kanu, Abdullahi Haruna Kiawa, has confirmed the incident. And a tanker loaded with premium motor spirits in the early hours of Saturday exploded in Badegi town in Kacha local government area of Niger state, injuring a roadside tea cellar. Badegi town, which is one of the major towns along Lambata Bida Road, also serves as a resting place for heavy duty drivers plying the north to south route. The road, which has been in a deplorable condition over the years, was made worse in the last few weeks by persistent rainfall causing heavy traffic that stretched over 50 kilometers. It was gathered that the incident was due to leakage from the vehicle. Meanwhile, Northeast Governors Forum has called on the federal government to accelerate the execution of the Mambila hydroelectric project. In a communique issued at the end of the seventh meeting of the forum held on Friday, the Northeast Governors decried the epileptic state of power supply in the region. Ibrahim Ismail reports. The seventh meeting of the Northeast Governors Forum focused on development and security of the region. After hours of deliberation, the governors reached a consensus on factors affecting the development of the region. Governor Mema Labuni of Yobe State, who joined the meeting after the opening ceremony, read the communique. The forum 
again expressed concern on the balanced state of power supply in the Northeast region, which at present receives less than 5% of national allocation of grid energy, while accounting for 14% of the population and 30% of land mass. While noting the direct acceleration between energy security and high level of poverty and our GDP status, it called on the federal government to introduce innovative strategies for investing in the production of comparatively cheaper, hydropower and renewable energy. Related to this, the federal government is called upon to accelerate the execution of the Mambila Hydroelectricity Project. The governors also expressed concern over the effect of flooding to the people of the region. The forum expressed great concern about the devastating effect of flooding, which is destroying homes and livelihoods, including road infrastructures. The forum therefore calls on the federal government as a matter of urgency, direct its relevant agencies to immediately deploy all necessary interventions to ameliorate the situation in the affected areas. In the area of business, the forum called for the revival of the Northeast Joint Trade Fair to boost commercial activities in the region. The forum noted the need to harness the vast untapped resources of the sub-region by fostering integration in commerce as well as holding trade fairs with a view to attracting foreign investments. Forum therefore urged the Northeast Council of Chambers of Commerce to revive the Northeast Joint Trade Fair and commodity markets to stimulate economic activities. The eighth meeting of the Northeast Governors Forum is scheduled to hold in Maiduguri, the Borno State Capital, on 25 November 2022 from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. And senior staff of Federal Ministry of Justice uh, converge in Kano for a three-day retreat on effective justice sector service delivery. Salim Umar reports. At least 100 senior management staff in the Ministry of Justice and legal experts have converged in Kano to deliberate on an important national assignment. Having regards to the existing challenges in this justice system, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, said the retreat is geared towards finding lasting solutions for effective service delivery. These management retreats afford us the opportunity for new and self-assessment of our achievements as a ministry so far. Identify equally the challenges and areas require revitalization and then come up with innovative ideas to enhance our capacities to more efficiently and effectively achieve our institutional market as a ministry. The Solicitor General of the Federation and Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Beatrice Jedi Apa said the need to enhance the functionalities of the systems and structures is imperative. We need to make adequate efforts toward upholding our core values, identify and tackle constraints to our ability to achieve our mandate as a ministry. We must make deliberate efforts to reposition the ministry towards attainment of government reform initiatives. Our service delivery must reflect our service compact. While declaring the retreat open, Kano State Governor, represented by his deputy, Nasir Gauna, charged participants to solicit more provision of funding to the Legal Aid Council chapter in the state. I would also like to urge the retreat to explore the possibility of increasing the funding of Legal Aid Council and posting of more counsel to their office in Kano State to enable them to assist the state ever increasing population. The retreat ends on Sunday. Salim Umar Ibrahim, Trust TV News. And motorists in Bochi State are appreciative of the efforts of traffic regulatory agencies in discharging their duties despite numerous challenges. 
the motorists speak to Trans TV on their experiences while plying Nigerian roads. Adam Imam files in this report. Motorists are expected to obey traffic regulations at all times, but in some cases, however, they neglect simple rules and regulations capable of causing fatal accidents. Some drivers are of the view that traffic regulators are doing well enforcing traffic rules during operations. Even though the, 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 the federal drive safety as well to rate money, to, because of this regulation, they put to the remote for the government, and this is what is exactly minimizing the, 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 the road, uh, making the people to really strict to the laws of the road. And our securities, they are doing their work very well because they are trying. But some people, way that they never understand them. So they are the one that they are, they are abusing them or uh, harassing them if they you know, understand what they want the driver to, 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 to be a good driver. Awale Musa, an experienced commercial driver, explained that despite their contribution on safety of the roads, officials often favor some over others after committing traffic offense. But you get some of them, few of them, they used to collect something from drivers. They don't even care with, uh, in case of overload or open road or vice versa, triangle lashing, they do not care with that one. If you came anyhow, if you get 200 naira or either 500 naira to collect from you, then you can go anywhere you like. Federal Road Safety Special Marshal says people are so careless on traffic rules, attributing this to why major road accidents occur. Every motorist should remember that he has a duty of care. A duty of care. A duty that it is only Allah's one or what Allah and you the driver that is controlling the lives of the people you are carrying in your vehicle. And Islamically, any life that you mistakenly or carelessly wasted through you, you have the to pay. He noted that a special marshal is his duty to engage in operational clampdown of defaulters on traffic rules. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. You're watching Trust TV News Update. And still to come, on the news, just residents decry vandalization of Community Bridge. Details of this and more after the break. You stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now let's recap our top stories. One dead and six injured in Jigawa building collapse. Chinese man stabs 23-year-old Nigerian lover to death in Kanu. And moving on to other news now. The National Identity Management Commission has said almost 90 million people have registered for the National Identification Number. NIMSI Director General and Chief Executive Officer Aliu Aziz disclosed this on Friday in Abuja at an event to commemorate the fourth National Identity Day with the theme, Traditional Institutions as Critical Stakeholders for Citizens' Mobilization. With the development, Aziz explained that Nigerians in diaspora 
would have the opportunity to enroll and have their national identity, even while outside the shores of the country. According to him, the more the government knows the accurate number of its population and the right demographics, the better it is placed to plan well for infrastructure, social welfare and economic development. The NIMSI chief believes this underscores the importance of identity and directly links the importance of the commemoration of the National Identity Day. There's an uneasy calm among parents in Plateau State whose children will be resuming school next week. Now, this is due to the rumored hike in school fees as a result of inflation that has affected the price of goods and services nationwide. Dixon Adama, in this report, takes a look at the situation that has left parents wondering how to meet up with the costs of keeping their kids in their present schools or to change to cheaper ones. His report is presented from our studio. The Plateau State Government recently disclosed that the official date for resumption of academic activities in the state for both public, private, primary and secondary schools is Monday, 19 September 2022. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong, who ordered the reopening of the schools across the state, said all boarding school students are to resume on Sunday, 18 September 2022, a day to the Monday resumption. All zonal and area directors of schools were also directed to ensure strict compliance to the resumption date. The directive, which should ideally be a welcome development for parents to see their children return to school, is however making parents anxious as they try to meet up with the financial needs of their children. This is worsened by the fact that there are feelers from different quarters that school preparators are planning to increase their fees. The rising cost of uh, things in the markets or the society compared to the resumption of school fees. We have about 10 days, 11 days before the school resumes. And some of us who are parents are wondering what will happen, especially with the information we are getting that proprietors are getting ready to increase school fees because of a high cost of this, high cost of that. Meanwhile, schools have started making preparations for resumption, beginning with teachers' pre-resumption workshop. One of such took place at Edo Kia School in Jaws. The workshop focused on pre-term plan, lectures, presentations, among others. We have a consideration for parents because we also um, go to the same market with them. We buy things together. We also pass through all the challenges. We consider such kind of things and as a school, we maintain um, a low increase uh, of school fees. My advice to parents this morning is that things are very hard, not just school fees. Other things, when you go to market, you see a lot of issues going on. I, I advise parents that they should take things easy, cut it according to your size. Stakeholders in the education sector said if nothing is done to address the inflation, the number of out-of-school children will further increase. And residents of Bulbula community in Joss North, local government area of Plateau State, are decrying the vandalization of a bridge that links their community with other communities in Joss Metropolis. The residents say they have reported the issue to Joss North local government chairman on the need to take stringent measures, but to no avail. Adu Musa reports. The bridge, popularly known as Gardens Ogai, was constructed in 1975 and is linking various communities in the state capital. According to the resident, this is a bridge with intense traffic, and if it collapses, it can lead to catastrophe as thousands of people go through the bridge every day for their daily activities. They said, vendors, especially youth, have been removing the iron roads in the pillars of the bridge, making it weak, which is dangerous to motorists and people plying the road. Umar Yakubu, the world head of Lubula community, while lamenting on the condition of the bridge, blamed the Josno local government authority for its lackadaisical attitude towards the repairs of the bridge. One of the things that I left the Aka, we discovered in Chiwara, yeah, that's some part of the road. The very day we discovered that some unscrupulous youth have started removing the iron road used in the construction of the pillars of the road, we took action at our level as community. We set up a group of people to be passing night at the side of the bridge 
to prevent the vandals from removing the roads because the vandals come in the night. But despite such effort, they beat our intelligence to remove the roads during rainy when all of us have returned home. We reported the incident to the chairman of Just Not Shaupala, but nothing has been done about it. This is the bridge that links communities of Majima, Zololo, Bulbula, Nasarawa, and Lai in Sarki. Students pass across the bridge to their various schools. We pass through the bridge while going for our businesses or hospitals. But the bridge is now in a sorry condition. If the bridge collapses, it is a big problem to us. We have realized that the bridge is shaking. We call on the government to do the next one before it is too late. Effort to contact the chairman, just no local government area, Shehubala, on the Jebel government, prove abortive. However, the community said, if nothing is being done to salvage the bridge from possible collapse, various communities will suffer. Adam Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. Senate President Ahmed Lawan said President Muhammad Buhari is expected to present the proposed 19.76 trillion Naira 2023 appropriation bill to the National Assembly in the first week of October. Lawan made this disclosure while inspecting the makeshift Senate chamber, which will serve as the temporary chamber due to the ongoing renovation of the Senate's main chamber. Upon resumption on September 20th, the Senate is expected to confirm the nomination of Acting Chief Justice of the Federation, Justice Olukaede Ariwala. Acting CJN was appointed on June 27th this year, and he has three months to get Senate confirmation, failure of which will require a fresh nomination. The renovation of the National Assembly complex with completion target of August next year is for the use of the incoming 10th Assembly. And in business, the equity market on Friday closed on a bearish note as the all share index depreciated by 0.13% to settle at 49,475.42. The market capitalization declined by 0.13% to close at 26.686 trillion, shedding 35 billion naira. The market breadth closed negative as nine equities appreciated in their share prices against 14 equities that declined in their share prices. An aggregate of 107.5 million units of shares were traded in 3,303 deals valued at 1.150 billion naira. And now look at the foreign scene where people flocked to central London to join a queue filing past the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II on Saturday, despite a government warning to stay at home to avoid standing in line for hours to see the late monarch's lion in state. Tens of thousands of people have already filed past the coffin in a steady, solemn stream, queuing for hours through the dark and cold to pay their respect to Britain's longest reigning monarch. By mid-morning, the culture ministry said the waiting time stood at up to 16 hours to reach, to reach Westminster Hall. Earlier, the ministry said it would pause entry into the queue if demand became too high. The Queen's grandchildren will stand in vigil around her coffin in London on Saturday, hours after their parents held a vigil in the Palace of Westminster. And finally, in sports, Jose Pissero has invited 25 players ahead of the Super Eagles international friendly match with Algeria, which comes up on Tuesday, 27th September in Oran. The 25-man 25 25 squad for the high-profile friendly was published on the Super Eagles Twitter handle on Saturday. The quartet of Wilfred Ndidi, Kevin Akoguma, Chidera Ejuke and Maduka Okoye are making a return to the squad, while club Bruga midfielder Rafael Onyedika gets his first call-up. Other players invited for the friendly are skipper Ahmed Musa, Francis Ozoho, Adebayo Adele, William Trust Ekong, Leon Balogun, Zaidu Sanusi, Ola Aina, Calvin Basi, Chidozi Awaziam, and Moses Simon. Also listed are Kelis G. Enacho, Henry Onyekuru, Terry Murphy, Cyril Dessers, Alex Iwobi, Taiwo Awani, Ademola Lukman, Samuel Chikweze, Frank Onyeka, and Kenneth Omeru. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. 
For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.